Hello everyone, it's Doug McGuff with Body by Science, Ultimate Exercise, and DrMcGuff.com. Before we get started on today's topic, I just wanted to remind you guys to hit like and to subscribe. Um, what I wanted to talk to you about today is um, putting mTOR in its proper context. Um, in the recent past, I've uh, been speaking with several people that have become uh, interested in the anti-aging um, movement and have been following intermittent fasting and ketogenic diets as a mechanism of um, extending health span and extending lifespan. And that is done through um, an energy sensing pathway. And um, these people that are doing this, I've tried to encourage them to come to Ultimate Exercise and come and strength train because of its important benefits for longevity. But I've had people say, I don't want to strength train because strength training turns on mTOR and mTOR is a bad thing for aging. And I want to take a moment here to kind of dispel that notion because it's a gross, gross oversimplification of a very complex um, metabolic signaling pathway. Um, so I want to discuss a little bit about how that works so hopefully in the end people will not be fearful of doing one of the most important things they can do for health and longevity and that is resistance exercise and strength training. So let's talk about it. Um, your body, we evolved out in an environment where there was not just a continuous abundance of food. So your body, knowing what the best thing to do at any given time to take its opportunities, relies on energy signaling pathways. And there are two major pathways that go down different forks in the road depending upon the environment that you're in. If you're in an environment of low energy or food scarcity, then you're going to stimulate through the low level of um, ATP that's in your system because of the low level of nutrition that's going on, you will signal um, a pathway that is mediated by a molecule called AMPK, which is a peptide that has signaling effects. And that signal basically says, we are in a low energy environment, so now is the time to undergo repair and autophagy and now is not the time to undergo reproduction and growth and differentiation. So we shut down reproduction, growth, and, in, um, and differentiation, and we ramp up autophagy, cell repair, disposal of misfolded proteins, and things of that nature. And that has a very good um, longevity and anti-aging benefit. Um, on the other side of the equation, during periods of energy abundance, or through an appropriate exercise stimulus, you are going to turn on mTOR. And mTOR was originally called mammalian target of rapamycin, but now it's called mechanistic target of rapamycin. And I think that's important because there are different mechanisms whereby you can activate mTOR. But when mTOR is activated, what it tells the body is we are in a high energy state. So now is a time when it's safe for reproduction, so we can pass our DNA forward into the future. It's also a time for growth and cell differentiation. Um, that activity, though, is going to generate, um, in, the, in metabolizing those foodstuffs to, to drive that process, is going to generate some waste products and free radicals um, and oxidative um, molecules that can accelerate aging in a particular context, but the context is important. So let's look at mTOR. Um, basically, there are three things that can make mTOR go. And one of them is amino acids, particularly branch chain amino acids, and the amino acid leucine is um, the quintessential amino acid that turns on mTOR. The second are growth factors. So these are things that are signaling a high energy state like insulin and insulin-like growth factor one or IGF-1. Okay, so that's the second thing. The third thing is mechanical loading of muscle. So mechanical strain um, sensed by the muscle and the accumulation of fatigue that occurs as a consequence is another powerful mechanism whereby you turn on mTOR. Now, think of mTOR like a car. There's different ways 
of allowing mTOR to go. Um, so just like a car, there's an accelerator and there's a brake. So you can make mTOR go by pushing on the accelerator. You can also allow mTOR to go to um, remove your foot from the, bay, from the brake. So mTOR can be activated by an activator or it can be activated by the removal of an inhibitor complex. That's two different ways it can be done. So amino acids signaling mTOR do it by stepping on the accelerator. That's how they work. Well, insulin, it works by taking the brake off by the removal of an inhibitor. And guess what? So does exercise. Um, exercise under heavy load is sending a signal to remove an inhibitor to allow mTOR to go. So these things can work synergistically. You can have amino acids and resistance exercise working together, one stepping on the gas and the others taking the foot off the brake. And that allows mTOR to really go towards synthesizing new tissue and muscle growth. Likewise, you can make mTOR really go by stepping on the accelerator with amino acids and removing the brake with growth factors. So during a high energy intake, when you are not exercising, you're going to stimulate mTOR by accelerating with amino acids and by taking off the brake with insulin and IGF-1. And this difference is very, very important because that sets the context for, in terms of the whole anti-aging paradigm, which way you're activating mTOR has a lot of different meaning, okay? Let me explain that further. So remember that growth factors like insulin and insulin type growth factor one and mechanical loading of muscle both work by the same mechanism, okay? So, what that means, though, is when we talk about that particular mechanism, think about it like a balloon. If you push down on one side of the balloon, it's got to expand on the other side of the balloon and vice versa, or it's like a seesaw, okay? So, if you are activating mTOR through mechanical loading with exercise, by necessity, you have to turn off mTOR activation via insulin and IGF-1. So it's very context specific. So when you're turning on mTOR with exercise, you're doing it differently and you're suppressing the action of insulin and these growth factors on mTOR. That's important by suppressing insulin. Insulin also drives all other pathways that result in body fat storage, and the production of inflammatory cytokines, which have a negative effect on aging, whereas exercise is just the opposite. Further, mTOR is not a total body experience. These energy signaling molecules are the mechanism whereby you tell your body how to partition the available nutrients and energy that are there. So mTOR activation in skeletal muscle is a completely different event and has a completely different meaning than mTOR activation in your liver, per se. And to the extent that you are activating mTOR in your skeletal muscle is also the extent to which you are suppressing it in your liver. And it's my belief that mTOR signaling that is elevated through a process of growth factors and amino acids together, i.e. overnutrition, is the process whereby you're overstimulating um, growth and differentiation and signaling through the liver, which results in bringing glucose in and conducting de novo lipogenesis to make more fat and to store more, more fat to inhibit glucose utilization, to ramp up gluconeogenesis, all of the wrong signals. But if you're activating mTOR by the mechanism of doing exercise coupled with amino acid intake, 
that extent, you're driving that up and you're suppressing this other undesirable effect of mTOR in the liver. And this is the way that the body mod modulates the competition between tissues. Tissues don't just exist in a harmonious environment in the body. They are actually competing with each other. And through exercise, you set up a process where lean tissue gets the competitive advantage over body fat, which releases a lot of inflammatory, age-provoking cytokines, as opposed to muscle tissue, tissue which releases a lot of myokines, which are anti-inflammatory and have a longevity benefit. So that puts things together in their proper perspective and you can realize how there has to be a balance there. One of the things that I'm most proud about in Body by Science is that John Little and I came up with a definition of health that basically stated the state of health is characterized by an appropriate balance between an anabolic and a catabolic state. In our modern life way, we have a very distorted existence where we ex are existing in a mostly anabolic state driven by growth factors combined with the consumption of amino acids, so basically overfeeding. Like I said at the REC conference, if you want everything bad that can happen to the human animal to happen, what you have to do is you have to immobilize and overfeed. If you do that, you will signal mTOR in the wrong way and get the bad effect that everyone fears. But signal it in the right way and you have just the opposite. So I do not want people to avoid strength training because they're fearful of elevating mTOR. The context of mTOR elevation is very, very important and it makes a big, big difference. So, for drmcguff.com, Body by Science, Ultimate Exercise, the end of this talk. If anyone wants to go on a much deeper dive on this or any other topic, I can be reached at drmcguff.com and you can schedule a consultation with me. Um, but for now, that's it and we'll see you on the next go-round.